Mission control was unclear if he reached the 100 kilometer mark. All of us thought we saw 328, but none of us saw anything more than that, so we knew it was close. I watched it count up to 326, 327, 328. Dangerously close, but above, you know, and I turned around and, and congratulated Paul Allen right at the moment. At the edge of a new frontier, the ecstasy of success switches in an instant to concern that Spaceship One is in trouble. Yeah, you need to work northwest when you can. I see that. And Doug, um, how long? Pitch trim. Mike, when able, pitch trim back to about two and a half. That was a, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Coming back. Whoa. Pull the breakers. Pull the breakers. As they make final adjustments for re-entry, a malfunction puts the program in its most dangerous spot to date. The trim control on one side of the craft locks at its extreme position. Mike tries to correct the problem okay. by changing to backup mode. Backup stab trim. Get backup stab trim to center. Spaceship One doesn't respond. This is not good. I thought, well, obviously the reason it's not coming back is because the tail's gone. So that only reinforced my mental picture of what might have happened during the explosion. So that didn't help me mentally at all. You know, I was very concerned that I couldn't get back at that time. Ground control can see that Spaceship One is intact. But without solving the trim problem, everyone knows that Mike is in serious trouble. In their current state, the trims would force Spaceship One into an uncontrollable and possibly inescapable downward spiral. Best case scenario, we would have lost the airplane. Worst case, we would have lost the airplane and Mike. Yeah, it's, it's a scary thing. Mike, if you copy, back up, stab, trim to center the roll. I'm trying. Copy. Yeah, roll forward, farther forward, stab, trim. I knew that was, we couldn't, we couldn't live with that problem. I tried everything I could, couldn't get it to come back, and then I waited a few seconds, and then I tried again, and it did come back. Got the roll fended. We're in the backup mode. Good. Okay, let's leave the trim alone until we get down. That's good. That trim is adequate for landing. In his final moments of weightlessness, Mike tests space. I did that without anyone's knowledge. I wanted to show people what zero G feels like. You know, you can feel it, but you can't describe it to anybody. So I thought of some candies, you know, some little, something that would be able to be squashed by the control system if, if it got in the way, and something that would really explain to people who've never seen zero G exactly what it feels like and looks like. Gravity once again takes hold of Spaceship One as the candies settle. I bet it was at least five minutes of concern that I didn't have an airplane that I could land. Fairs lot. I've never lost a plane yet. I've had severe problems in planes from time to time, but I've always brought it back. So I wanted to, desperately wanted to bring it back. Alpha has visual. The condition of Spaceship One is still unclear to Mike as he rapidly glides toward landing. Okay, Mike, everything is green here. We suggest you stay in your current step configuration for landing. Yeah, I copy that. I don't think I did touch the switch. We agree with that. As Mike Melville returns from space, two chase planes join to guide him home. For the first time, Mike has eyes outside to review the integrity of his ship. Okay, 
Mark, I heard several very heavy bangs and lots of buffeting, so I look it over close. Yeah, it looks like the tail fairing has a big buckle in the bottom of it. Gear doors look really good. Uh, no other apparent damage. Oh, that's good news, thank you. As soon as I heard the plane looked fine and there was no apparent damage, I just felt a huge weight off my shoulders. Now I got the runway inside. Four, three, two, one. Nice job. There you go. Thanks, Chuck. Best one yet. A perfect landing. So it said we could do it, and my gosh, we did. You know, if we can do this, we can do anything. Hey, this couldn't have been done without you, man. <laughs> Bert, my man. <laughs> I love you. How do you feel? Oh, I feel great. I, I've my never God, felt I... this well. <laughs> Thank you. You did a super job. Watching the people go crazy and so appreciative that we had brought the ship right down to them so they could take pictures of it immediately after the flight. Hey, it just doesn't get much better than that. That part of it was the most emotional part of it because I didn't really know how that would go. I am very pleased and honored to present for the very first time these FAA commercial astronaut wings to Mike Melville in recognition of this tremendous achievement. Woo! You know, I just think of myself as an ordinary guy who flies around the Mojave Airport for the last 26 years. Just to create a nice cup like that? Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly here all these people are and all of them want me to sign their stuff and that was amazing that people suddenly would put me up on this pedestal and act like I was some kind of special person. But it was, it, it meant a lot to me. It really did. After his public celebration, the world's first commercial astronaut comes home. It was hard to believe that our program's goal all of a sudden has been reached. The thing that I set off to do, and that is to show that a little guy like me with a small team here in Mojave could fly a manned space flight, that's done. It's, it's successful. Yeah, good man, John. Good job, brother. Put together a hell of an airplane, man. I think it's gonna take a day or two to, to actually sink in what we did, but Mike made it, he's safe, the airplane's in one piece, Oh boy. Memories of this day and these years hang fresh in everyone's minds. Soon they may drift from view. But perhaps the impact of these efforts will clarify with time. Expectations of what individuals can do has been slowly degraded over time. And Nowadays, people think you need large multinational corporations or large governments or international cooperations between Russia and China and the United States and millions of people to do something fantastic. And I, hopefully we've shown today that 20 people can do something fantastic. Since most of us were kids, most people play in the backyard and look at the stars. And they go, boy, I wonder what it's like up there dreaming about, man, someday I'm going to be able to go into space. Let's get people excited about space again. Let kids grow up thinking, man, I saw that spaceship one thing. Maybe when I'm older, I can live on the moon or whatever. So I'm really hoping that people see this for the significance that it is, not just as a circus stunt in the middle of the desert. Would you like an M&M that's been to space? Anybody who goes out and tries to do manned space flight in the future has a different benchmark to compare themselves against. It's no longer insane to think of a private company 
doing a manned spaceflight. What this means, I think, is enormous.